Hello, and welcome back to Conquering Finale. My name is Jason Lafredo, and today we're doing another Spotlight on Plugins. We are looking at one of my all-time favorite plugins, the JW Copy Part Layout Plugin. Now, the JW Plugins is a third-party uh, plugin set, so if you don't have that, uh, you should go get that, and I'm going to put the link to the website for those uh, in the description. And uh, when you do finally get them and install them on your computer, you'll get a JW Plugin submenu in the Plugins menu, and the one we're talking about is the JW copy part layout plugin and you get a little uh, very simple window to use here and um, it does pretty much exactly what you would expect it to do it copies the part layout from one part to another so in this particular file if we look at this flute one part I have this all laid out I did some work on this so that I've got my multi-measure rest set up I kind of did this in the commercial music tradition where you're doing four bars as a system four or five or six bars a system depending on the phrase although it wasn't really too careful about the phrases on this piece but anyway just just for demonstration um, and also you know, you know you have your long eight bar multi-measure rests on one line uh, the way that you would do this in commercial music and uh, I, I have page breaks and all that stuff I have a bunch of different things going on in this flute one part that I, I kind of worked on and, and made it look the way I wanted it to and I finish that and then I go to the flute two part and it looks just kind of plain Jane. This is the way the finale would set it up. There's almost no multi -re measure rest, although I did put in a couple here just uh, to illustrate something. And then, um, yeah, it's just, it's not, again, I would have to go through and do all of that work all over again, reset the, the bars on the systems and then, you know, recreate the multi measure rest, et cetera. As you probably know, this is a huge pain in the neck but not with this JW copy part layout. This is the brilliance of this plugin. All you do is go to the part that you want to change. So in this case, you have to be viewing the flute two part and then select the part that you want to copy from in the plugin. So here I'm gonna choose flute one. Now there is a sub option here, just one sub option about multi-measure rest. And if you check that, it will copy over the multi-measure rest layout. If you uncheck that, it won't copy over the multi-measure rests. Um, I'll talk about this a little bit more, but I'm just gonna leave this checked now. And all you do is press copy layout. And in one second, you get everything from the flute one part um, copied exactly into the flute two part as far as page layout is concerned. And when I say everything, I mean everything that you can conceive of in the page layout tool, basically. So the system margins, the system spacing, the uh, system size, even the page size and, and margin size, if they happen to be different on each part, uh, will actually get copied as well. In addition to all that, it will copy the uh, layout of the measures on each system exactly. And when you do that, it will automatically lock the systems for you. So uh, whether or not the systems were locked on the source part or not, uh, they happen to be locked on this flute one part, but if they were unlocked, it would lock them on the target part in this case. So again, it just copies it. It makes it look exactly the same as far as the, the, the uh, page layout tool is concerned. Everything is copied over the, the page breaks, the, the page margins. I mean, everything within the page layout tool gets copied over. It's really, really quite brilliant and saves a ton of time. Now, I want to talk a little bit more about this multi-measure rest option. Uh, a lot of times your parts will not have the same multi-measure rest layout. So now I'm in my bassoon one part. Um, I could also copy the flute one part, the, the layout from the flute one part, but if I try to do it with the multi-measure rest, it's gonna give you a warning that says that there's entries in measure 31, so you can't put a multi-measure rest there. So you'd have to delete those, you know, the data in those measures if you wanna do it like this. Um, and it will tell you to clear those measures to in order for this to work. And when you press OK, it, it doesn't actually do that. It just cancels the operation. You can, however, just uncheck multi-measure rests in this and choose, choose to copy the part layout that way. And it will go ahead and copy the part layout. Sometimes you do have to update layout. There you go. Um, again, you won't get the multi-measure rest, but now at least it will look somewhat uh, similar to the flute part. And from here, you can go ahead and you know recreate the multi-measure rest that you need. And in this case, you probably need to do some work in terms of you know rearranging the measures because a lot of this stuff is not going to work the same between the bassoon one and the flute one in this uh, instance. So uh, there is some usefulness to this. You know, if you get something, if you get a part that's pretty close to what you want, you can copy it and then make some adjustments as you go. You know, again, it just, it takes care of so much of the work so that it's, it's definitely worth doing it like this. For parts that are precisely the same, like the flute one 
and the flute too, where the uh, the instruments are resting in the exact same measures and are playing a lot of the same material. This is, I mean, this is killer because you can use the multi-measure rest function. You know, things like trumpet one and two and, and trumpet between trumpet two and three, they're probably going to be very, very similar. So uh, using the multi-measure rest is, is really a, a, a quick way to handle all of this. A couple other things to note in this little plugin, there is a button down here to view selected. This is just allowing you to navigate to whatever you have selected. So that'll take me to my flute two. If I choose clarinet and nay, it will take me to clarinet and nay, etc. Uh, so it's just a little quick uh, helper navigational tool right there. And then the close button, which will close the plugin. So you can see how this can be very quick, particularly with like string parts. Like here I've got my violin one kind of laid out the way I want it. And I know that the uh, rest of the strings are going to be probably similar. And I've got this mess of a, you know, violin two and viola. It's just not as pretty as my violin one part. It's just so quick to do this with this plugin. Go to violin two, choose violin one, copy part layout. Go to viola, choose violin one, uh, copy part layout. Go to cello, choose violin one, copy part layout, etc. And you can see how quickly I can uh, fix up my my strings. Um, of course, you know, you will have to make some adjustments like, you know, again, the, the measures aren't going to be precisely the same between every single part. But just doing this gets you so far along the road to good results. Um, it, it's totally, you know, it's absolutely worth it. I, I highly recommend this plugin. It's worth its weight in gold. Now, one other thing about this plugin is that in order for this plugin to work, the the source part and the target part have to have the same number of staff. So obviously this will work perfectly fine on any one staff part. Uh, if you do have a multi-staff part, and in this case I didn't have any um, uh, pianos or harps in this particular score, so I just kind of created a combined flute score as well as a combined bassoon score. If I were to try and copy uh, to the flute's combined score from the flute one part, uh, it's not going to let me. In fact, if I do that, it's going to give me a warning telling me that the flute one has one staff and flute two, and this part has two staff. So it won't allow me to do that. Um, but you can um, uh, copy to and from parts that have the same number of staff. So in this case, the bassoons combined has the same number of staffs as the flutes combined. So I can copy from flutes two or the flutes combined into bassoons combined, and uh, except without the multi-measure rests and we should get a result. And you'll notice the other thing, it does copy blank pages. That's the other thing that it, that it will copy over. Again, that's part of the page layout tool. So anything that you can do in the page layout tool, um, any of these page size, resize page, resize staff system, um, system margin, page margins, anything that you can do in here, uh, page breaks, um, all this stuff will copy over. In fact, actually, I think in this file, hold on, let me see if I can find it. I think it's the, what did I do, the bassoon two, I did something funny here, right? Oh yeah, so just for kicks, I set up this bassoon two part to be totally just wrong. <laughs> it's on, you know, it's on different paper. It's a different size. The margins are all over the place. You may have run into this. Uh, who knows? You may run into a weird file like this. You can see my bassoon one part looks like this. My bassoon two parts looks like this. So all I really have to do is just go to the bassoon two and copy bassoon one copy part layout and it fixes everything. It changes the page size, it changes the margins back to the way it's supposed to be, the, the size of the systems are correct again, and it copies everything like the bassoon one part. So a real, you know, a, a real time saver when you run into situations like that. So, uh, so yes, yeah, so that's what's going on. Um, uh, going back to the two part staff, the other thing I wanted to mention, the one thing that it will not copy, it will not copy staff uh, spacing. So if you have different spacings on the first system, you know, if you use these arrows to move this closer or this one farther, it won't actually copy those distances. That's one thing that it will not copy. Uh, it will not copy page attached text blocks. So I think in my flute one part, I had made a slight adjustment to the uh, title here to make it a little lower. And you remember I copied to the flute two part. It did not copy that adjustment. So it won't uh, copy uh, text block positions either. And the other thing it will not copy is uh, staff specific baseline adjustments on each part. So that's uh, three, three things that it won't uh, particularly deal with. So yeah, I mean, that's the JW copy part layout. Really simple, really powerful, 
really a huge time saver in so many occasions. I can't, I can't tell you how important it is to have this uh, plugin. So uh, you know, follow the link in the description. Go get this plugin. You will not be sorry. Now there is an alternate plug out in the plugin in the Patterson plugin set in the miscellaneous category called Copy Page Layout, and this is very very similar to the JW Copy Part Layout plugin. It does a lot of the same things, but there's a, a bunch of different advanced options uh, that you can do with it, which I th which I think is really handy. Um, and at some point, I will cover this plugin in another video. Um, but I just wanted to cover the JW plugin today. I love the JW plugin because it's so simple. Uh, for slightly more um, involved things, the the copy page layout plugin is definitely a go-to as well. So it just depends on what you're doing. But uh, I do promise to cover that plugin as well at some point. Um, so yeah, so there is the JW copy part layout. Uh, again, if you don't have it, really, it's it's totally worth it, um, in my opinion. So go out and get it. All right, and that's it. So thanks for watching. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, please do so. Hit the subscribe button or join the mailing list. Whatever you want to do would be most appreciated. And yeah, that's it for today. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon on the next video.